Hello children, here I am going to solve the most difficult question which has ever been asked in the history of JE advanced examination. I am doing it as a tribute to all the students who are going to write JE advanced exam 2022 which is going to be held day after tomorrow. I am really happy and excited to present this before you. Let me read the question once. Two thin circular disc of mass M and 4M having ready of A and 2A respectively are tightly fixed by a massless rigid rod of length L is equal to root 24A through their centers. This assembly is laid on a frame and flat surface and set rolling without slipping on the surface so that the angular speed about the axis of the rod is omega. The angular momentum of the entire assembly about the point O is L which of the following statement is R correct? Let me explain what is given in the question. There are two discs of mass M and 4M having ready A and 2A. They are connected by a rigid rod whose length L is given in terms of the ready A. L is equal to root 24A. Another one more very important thing to be noted is that rolling without slipping on the surface so that the angular speed about the axis of the road is omega. Therefore, only one information can be given. This angular speed, angular speed of spinning, okay, spinning angular speed is given as omega. What are all the things which we need to find? There are four things given in the option. We need to check one by one. Every option has a content on its own. Therefore, we have to treat every option separately. What is the first option? The center of mass of the assembly rotates about the z-axis with an angular velocity omega by 5. Omega is the spin angular speed. We, it is given that or it is to be checked that the center of mass angular speed about the z-axis. Because the center of mass is going to rotate about the uh, z-axis is the angular speed is omega by 5 or not. That is what we have to check. The magnitude of angular momentum of center of mass of the assembly above the point O is 81 m a square omega. Magnitude of angular momentum of center of mass. The angular momentum of center of mass about O whether it is equal to this or not. That is what we have to check second. Now, Option C, the magnitude of angular momentum of assembly about center of mass. Okay. The angular momentum of the assembly about center of mass, where it is, this or not. That should also be checked. Now, the magnitude of Z component of angular momentum is 55 m a square omega or not. The Z component of total angular momentum, whether it is this or not, that is what we have to let us take first option first and check it. See here, what does first option tell you? The center of mass of the assembly rotates about Z axis with angular speed omega by 5. Center of mass is somewhere here. The height of center of mass from the surface of the earth does not change with the time. That means the center of mass makes a horizontal circular motion about the axis Z. Let that angular speed be written as omega O or let us call it omega 0. Omega 0. Whether omega 0 is omega by 5 or not, what, what we have to check. One angular speed is already given to you. What is that angular speed given to you? Spin angular speed. If you use your right hand thumb rule, you know that this spin angular speed omega S. Let me call it as omega S is in this direction omega s that is given as omega okay that means we have to write omega o orbital angular speed in terms of spin angular speed spin angular speed is given as omega now what is the angular speed of the entire rigid body so this is like a truncated try to understand this is like a truncated cord just like a glass imagine that it to be a glass now, what does this the entire system do? The entire system uh, does orbital motion or rotation motion about Z axis. 
Therefore, it has got two angular speeds, omega 0, or else omega O, or omega S. When you add them, you will get the net angular speed of the body. When you add, what direction this uh, net omega be? I claim that it will be along this line. It will be along this line. The net omega, let me call it as capital letter omega, will be along this line, no doubt at all. What's the logic behind that? You must know the idea of IAR, instantaneous axis of rotation. How to find the instantaneous axis of rotation? Find out the point of zero velocity in the body. See, here there is no slipping. Therefore, this point is, uh, this point has zero velocity. So, is the case with this point. Therefore, these two points must lie on the instantaneous axis of rotation. That's the very reason I told you that this is the instantaneous axis of rotation. Let me write it as IAR. This axis is IAR. For a rigid body, the net angular speed will always be along the IAR, instantaneous axis of rotation. Now, you see here, omega S plus omega O result in capital letter omega. Now, if this angle is theta, you know, this angle will also be theta. From this, you can say that omega S, the component of omega S, this component, sine component of omega S must be equal to omega O. Omega O must be cancelled by the sine component of omega S such that the resultant is like this. Therefore, you can write it like that. What? Omega O is equal to omega S sin theta. Then, how will you find sin theta? Sin theta can easily be found from this triangle. Isn't it? L is given as root 24A. If you apply Pythagoras theorem, this is the hypotenuse. If you square it and add these two things, you will get the square of this hypotenuse. When you apply Pythagoras theorem, this will be 5A. Therefore, you can write sin theta is equal to 1 divided by 5. Opposite by adjacent. A divided by 5A. That is 1 divided by 5. Then what will cos theta be? Cos theta will be adjacent side. Root 24A divided by 5A. That means root 24 divided by 5. So, if you put it here, omega orbital angular velocity is equal to, here omega is, is nothing but omega. It is given in your question. Therefore, you can write omega, omega, let me write omega, sin theta, we have seen it to be 1 divided by 5. Therefore, orbital angular speed, orbital angular speed, omega O is equal to, omega O is equal to, omega divided by 5. Isn't that the option given here? See here, the center of mass of the assembly rotates about this set axis with an angular speed omega by 5. This option is correct. See, that is what we have got. One more thing I am going to do before I am switching over to the second option. I want to find out this capital letter omega. Because in future use, in future it will be useful to me. What is omega? Omega will be the cosine component of omega s. Okay. Omega is the cosine component of omega s. Therefore, let me found, find that also. Omega, capital letter omega, which is the net angular speed of the rigid body is equal to omega s spin angular speed multiplied by cos theta. Cos theta's value is given there. Omega s is nothing but omega. Therefore, omega can be written as what? Uh, what will you write? Root 24 divided by 5 omega. Keep it in your mind, this value, because this will be useful in the future options. Now, having done the option A, let us go for the option B. The magnitude of angular momentum of the center of mass of the assembly about the point O is 81 m a square omega. Out of all options, this option is very difficult to crack. I shall explain it. Listen to me carefully. You know the center of mass of the system lies somewhere in between the masses. To find out the angular momentum, 
we must first find out the position vector of the center of mass related to O. RCM must be known to you. Not only that, you must know the velocity of center of mass also. Velocity of center of mass in this instant is directed into the plane, into the screen. VCM is directed into the screen. If you know the direction of these two, RCM and VCM, you can easily find out the direction of angular momentum. How will you find the direction of angular momentum? You know, angular momentum about O can be written as mass of the system multiplied by RCM cross VCM. This is a standard equation. You must know this. Then, LO is directed in the direction of RCM cross VCM. If you use your right hand thumb rule, you know how to take the cross product, RCM cross VCM, you can easily understand that the angular momentum is directed perpendicular to the axis, axis of spinning, like this. This is the direction of LO and it makes same angle as this. This is theta and this one also will be theta. So, this theta with this z-axis is same as this particular theta. Then, since VCM and RCM are mutually perpendicular, it is very easy to write down its magnitude. Yellow magnitude of angular momentum is equal to M VCM RCM. Why it has been written like this? Because VCM and RCM are always perpendicular. Therefore, M, VCM, RCM can be written in place of magnitude of angular momentum of center of mass about O. This is the magnitude of angular momentum of center of mass about the point O. Here, what does M mean? M means total mass of the system. That is very trivial. 4M plus M. 5M is the uh, value for capital term. Then we have to find VCM and RCM also to crack what yellow. Then let us find M, VCM, RCM separately. See here, as I told you, as I told you, M is the total mass of the system, which is equal to 5 small letter M. Then RCM is the center of mass of the system. How will you find out the center of mass? of the system. That is very easy. M1 R1 plus M2 R2 divided by M1 plus M2. M1 means M. M. R1 means L. M2 R2. 4 M into 2 L. What is that? 8 M L divided by M1 plus M2. M1 plus M2 is 5 M. So, RCM we got as 9 L by 5. Let it be there. Now our job is to find out velocity of center of mass. That is very difficult to find out. But if you know the idea, if you have the idea of instantaneous axis of rotation, I have already told you that this particular line is instantaneous axis of rotation. I, A, R, instantaneous axis of rotation. If you have the idea about instantaneous axis of rotation, you can find out the velocity of any point. How will you do that? To find out the velocity of any point, you have to drop a perpendicular to this instantaneous axis of rotation. Let me write it as R perpendicular and to multiply that with the total angular speed of the system. What is the total angular speed of the system? Omega is equal to root 24 divided by 5 omega. We have already proved it. We have already seen it. Therefore, let me find VCM also here. How will you find VCM? I have already told you. VCM is equal to what? R perpendicular multiplied by omega. What is R perpendicular? This length. You know that this length is RCM. This angle is theta. Therefore, therefore, R perpendicular is nothing but RCM sin theta. Isn't it? Then omega we have already found in the previous option. That omega is equal to root 24 divided by 5 omega. Let me write root 24 divided by what? 5 omega. Now I am going to substitute the value of RCM from here. Sin theta's value is known to me. We have already found. 
everything is going to be substituted there. VCM is equal to RCM. What is RCM? 9L by 5 into sin theta's value is 1 by 5. We have already seen that. Root 24 divided by 5 omega. Then let us multiply it. 9 into root 24 divided by 5 into 5 into 5. 125. Then what is that? L omega. That is VCM. So we have got M, RCM and VCM. Then we can find L. I have already told you that L is in this direction. What is L? Angular momentum of center of mass, of center of mass, about origin, about O. How will you find that? We have already derived our equation for that. What was that? L O is equal to M, total mass of the system, VCM of the system, RCM of the center of mass. VCM of center of mass, velocity of center of mass into uh, position vector of center of mass relative to O. Let me substitute all those. L O is equal to M is 5M. We have already seen that, 5M. VCM, in the previous slide we have seen that. What was VCM? VCM was this. Look here. Let me substitute that. 9 into root 24 divided by divided by 125. Then what was there? L omega. Then one more thing. RCM. We have already found RCM also. 9 L divided by 5. Let us multiply all these things together. L O is equal to uh, this 5 gets cancelled, this 5 and this 5 gets cancelled, the rest shall be multiplied. What is that? 81 root 24 divided by 125. What is remaining? M L square omega. Then you are given in the question that L is equal to, this is known to you, L is equal to root 24A. This is there in your question. That also I am going to substitute. Then my answer will be complete. Listen here. Yellow is equal to 81 root 24 divided by 125. M omega is written as it is. L square is equal to 24A square. Isn't it? 24A square. That is what L square is. Now, uh, is this equal to what is given in your option? In your option, it is given as 81 m a square omega. 81 m a square omega. Okay. So, this value is not equal to the value given in your option. Therefore, your option is wrong. But I am going to approximately how much it is. Because in future, I may need the value of L. I am going to approximate it. Okay. Yellow is approximately equal to, for that, let me consider it to be 25. 24, I shall consider it 25 and I shall uh, cancel it with the 125. So, what will I get? 81 root 24 divided by 5 m a square omega. That is approximate value. Okay. So, this value is different from this value. Therefore, option B is wrong. Okay. This was a little difficult uh, options, but we have cracked it. This is the way in which it is done. Now I am going for option C. What does option C tell you? Let me read it out. The magnitude of angular momentum of assembly about the center of mass is 17 m a square omega by 2. That means 17 by 2 m a square omega. Let's carefully listen what they are asking angular momentum of assembly about center of mass. Angular momentum of this assembly about center of mass. What does it mean? It means that if the observer is moving with the center of mass, that's the meaning. See, here is the center of mass. Here is the center of mass. If an observer is just moving with the center of mass, what is the angular momentum felt by him? I shall tell you once again. Suppose there is a coordinate system. Uh, attached to center of mass, a coordinate system moving with the center of mass. So, 
and an observer is sitting in that coordinate system, what is the angular momentum being felt by him? What motion only will be felt by him? He is in orbital motion, isn't it? About is the axis he is revolving, that will not be felt by him because he is moving along with the along with the center of mass. But the spin, he is not spinning. He is just moving along with the center of mass. He doesn't spin. Okay. Therefore, he sees only the spin motion of the system. Therefore, the meaning of this sentence, what angular momentum about the center of mass means spin angular momentum. That's all. Let me write. Angular momentum about angular momentum about center of mass meaning angular momentum due to spin spin motion of this system. Angular momentum due to spin motion, I shall write it as LS. LS is what I use it, use for angular momentum for spin, angular momentum due to spin motion. Okay. Then we are asked to find angular momentum due to spin motion. Once again, I, I shall say angular momentum about center of mass is as good as telling angular momentum due to spin motion of the system. How will you do that? Angular momentum. This is I omega. It's a standard equation. I omega s. Omega s is the spin angular speed. So, this is a vector. Angular momentum is a vector. You must be able to find its direction also. So, in vector form, you can write it like that. Omega s. So, this spin angular momentum is directed in the direction of spin angular velocity. What's the direction of spin angular velocity? We have already seen that spin angular velocity is directed in this direction. In first option, we have seen spin angular velocity is directed that way. Therefore, spin angular momentum also is directed in that way. See here, spin angular momentum, LS also is directed in that way. Therefore, we got the direction of this angular momentum also. Okay. If you are interested only in magnitude, you can write LS is equal to I omega S. Omega S is spin angular speed, which is given as omega. See. This omega s is nothing but omega. It is given in your question as omega. Then what is moment i? That is the moment of inertia of the system about the axis about which it is spinning. That means moment of inertia of the system about this axis. That is what omega is. To find that, that is very easy because this is a disk. This is a disk. You know the moment of inertia of a disk about its geometrical axis. This is nothing but geometrical axis. It is spinning about its geometrical axis. Therefore, it is very easy to crack. Moment of inertia is equal to m r square by 2. Means m a square by 2 for the first one. For the second disk, this is 2m. Its mass is 2m. Its radius is 2a. Not 2m. 4m. Let me write it. 4m into 2a all square divided by divided by 2. This is i. Then omega s is nothing but omega. Isn't it? Therefore, let me write omega instead of omega s. Therefore, ls is equal to spin angular momentum is equal to m a square by 2 here. There 16 m a square by 2 altogether 17 by 2 m a square omega. You can write it 17 m a square omega. Isn't it? Is it what given there? Of course, it is what being given here also. Therefore, this option is correct. We have one more option to be checked option d let us see the magnitude of z component of l is 55 m a square omega l look here what is this l this l is the total angular momentum of this body how will you find total angular momentum if you are asked to find what is the total angular momentum what you will do you know it has two angular momenta what are they spin angular momentum in this direction and orbital angular momentum in this direction. This is angular momentum about center of mass. That this is angular momentum of center of mass. A rigid body in general rotation has uh, two components in its angular momentum. What are the angular momentum of a rigid body is nothing but angular momentum of center of mass plus angular momentum about center of mass. Once, I, once again, I shall say, what is this? This is the angular momentum of center of mass. This is the angular momentum about center of mass. If you add them properly, vectorly, you will get LS, L, 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 what is given in your question. But that is not asked. 
What is asked? The component of L along is a disaster. Along is it. That means take this vector and this component is what is being asked. So to find that component, you need not find the actual vector. This L you need not find. Why? Because that L's component, another two component, you know. Therefore, take the component of L along Z and take the component of L as along Z. They are oppositely directed. Therefore, subtract one from the other, you will get L Z. Okay. Let me write that. I want L Z. How will I find L Z? I can find L Z if I take yellow's yellow's component along Z. What is that? Yellow cos theta minus then ls component ls component this component what is that minus ls sin theta then in previous options we have found lo and ls in option b we found lo in option c we found ls its value is written here we have already found cos theta's value we know sin theta's value we know just for your ready a reference I have written that out to that to here. Therefore, yellow cos theta, that means you have to multiply this with this yellow cos theta minus ls. Ls means this sin theta. Sin theta is this. So in that, what is common? M a square omega is common. Let me write that outside. L is a d is equal to what is common? M a square omega is common. Then what is there? What is remaining there? M a square omega I have written. This is remaining. And this cos theta. This is also remaining. What can you do it in your head? Multiply them together. 81, 24, 5. What you will get? Ah, let me write as it is. 81 root 24 divided by what is that? 5 into root 24 by 5. Minus is written as it is. This minus. Then what? ls sin theta ls sin theta ls this one we have written m a square omega already written then 17 by 2 and 1 by 5 are remaining let me write 17 by 2 into 1 by 5 isn't it then l is a d is equal to m a square omega then what is this quantity this is 81 into 24 81 into 24 divided by 5 into 5, 25 minus 17 divided by 10. This is what I get. Now, uh, I am going to approximate it to find whether it is anywhere near to 55. I am going to approximate. Okay. Therefore, LS is nearly equal to M A square omega. How to approximate this? This 24 you think to be 25. This is 25. Take it as 25. This is 25. Just let it cancel. Therefore, 81 comes here. 17 by 10, that you know, 1.7. When you subtract, what you will get? LS is nearly equal to, this is 79.3 M A square omega. That is, that is not exact answer, but that is almost near to the right answer. This is no way near to the given value. Therefore, the given option is wrong. So, out of four options, we have seen that only two options are correct. Two options are wrong. What are those two right options and what are those two wrong options? Let me revisit the question again and mark the right one and cross the wrong one. The first one was right. We have seen that. The second one was wrong. We have proved that. Then third one was right. Fourth one, we have just seen it to be wrong. Therefore, A and C are the right option to this question. Children, as I told you, this is the most difficult question in the history of J advanced question. I am dedicating it to you as a gift. Thank you. <laughs>